Welcome. A domino effect seems to have gripped much of the northern parts of Africa as citizens in a whole range of countries have risen up against authoritarian regimes and declared the importance of democracy. Now one that stands out is Libya, where Muammar Gaddafi, who has been in power for somewhere over four decades, seems to refuse to deal with democratic aspirations of Libyans and has refused to stand down. What we want to look at in this program, which as you know, deals with a large degree with the Constitution and therefore with human rights and with our commitment to human rights, is what should our role be with regard not just to Libya, but with regard to supporting democratic initiatives on our own continent? Should we be guided and how should we be guided by the spirit and purport of our Constitution in order to assist, to resolve not just the Libyan crisis, but any of the other crises as well in Africa and indeed the democratic initiatives. So this evening to discuss this particular issue we have the executive director for the Southern African Litigation Center Nicole Fritz as well as International Relations and Cooperation Department's Deputy Director General for African Bilateral Relations Nkosi. Nkosi. Let me start with you. I know we spoke about it earlier and you quite loyally fashion informed me that you weren't an expert on Egypt. That's fine. That's not what I want to talk about. Okay. What I want to talk about is suddenly the northern parts of this continent, like Rip van Winkel, have woken up and are asserting what some people at least would describe as democratic aspirations. Mm -hmm. One, I assume you'd agree with that. If you don't, then let me know. The second is, well, what should we be doing? as a country which is committed through our constitution to human rights? And have we been doing what we should be doing? Well, I mean, not only are we sort of committed uh, under our constitution to ensure that public power is exercised um, in a way, a manner that's consistent with human rights, and our foreign policy is obviously a, a, a species of that um, public power. And South Africa as an emerging power is increasingly playing a very important role in, uh, on the international stage. It, is, it has been elected to a second term on the Security Council. Um, and we've seen uh, South Africa there uh, within the ranks of the Security Council take sort of fairly swift, decisive action in respect of, of Libya. So we saw an, an arms embargo, an assets freeze imposed, and then we saw a referral to the International Criminal Court. But that's by the United Nations, of which United we supported. And fence. South Africa, and, and we have, I mean, I mean, if you look back at South Africa's previous tenure in the Security Council, we saw it occasionally act to stop you know, kind of historic condemnation um, and, um, you know, presidential action on the Security Council. So I think that this is a positive move. We now see um, Jacob Zuma, you know, going to, to Libya, uh, mandated by the African Union um, Peace and Security Council, among, uh, along with other, uh, four other uh, state leaders. And the hope there is that, you know, what they will call for is a, a ceasefire and negotiations. I mean, that they will, I mean, it doesn't look like an, um, we're going to see um, a no-fly zone. And, and I think, you know, to some extent, one has to hope that there will be strong action on the part of the, the African Union and that South Africa recognizes that as a leader within the African Union, um, it will be judged by, by its actions now. Mr. Corsi, how do you respond to that? Would you agree? Indeed, I agree. South Africa, as you know, is a responsible global citizen. Well, how responsible? Also, I mean, people have criticized our country for Zimbabwe, for Burma. We're also a responsible African citizen. Okay. And our foreign policy is predicated on uh, human rights, uh, democracy, uh, promotion of good governance. And uh, consequently, we have a duty, we have a responsibility, we have an obligation to support the transition countries of North Africa as they um, make a break with the past and embark on a, a very auspicious process of democratization and social transformation. Could I ask you, just be specific for a moment, take Libya. Mm. Are we going to push hard for some serious democratic initiative there that people will be listened to, that this 
this extraordinary situation that we have in Libya as we are discussing matters with, with ordinary citizens being bombed and with a real threat, possibly, if not genocide, certainly of the specter of either Rwanda or, or Bosnia upon us. Are we going to be firm about this? Indeed, South Africa, as part of the AU high-level panel on the resolution of the crisis in Libya. So we're not just going to have a cup of tea with Colonel Gaddafi. We're actually going to try to do something about this. Of course, we're going to engage all the parties, including Colonel Gaddafi, um, with a view, as I say, to first ensure that there's a cessation of hostilities and two, that uh, the parties engage in talks aimed at finding a lasting and durable political solution to the current crisis in Libya based on the will of the people. And what happens if Colonel Gaddafi says thank you very much, but no thank you? Uh, that is speculative. Not too spe speculative. I know you would say that, but I thought it's not entirely so, bearing in mind what's happened to date. Well, Look, uh, I mean, compare, let's Li compare Egypt.